I'm going to show you how to make burrito shells from scratch. What I have here is a half a cup of white flour, two cups of whole wheat flour, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking powder, and two tablespoons or one eighth of a cup of vegetable oil. Okay, I'm going to start with a cup and a quarter of warm water. I'm going to add my oil. Add my baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, give it a little stir, just to combine it. Then the white flour. The white flour is just to develop some gluten. You can use more or less white flour, depends on your taste. And it just kind of looks like soup right now, so we're going to start adding the whole wheat flour. Because I usually make these without measuring, we're going to start with two cups of whole wheat flour and see how it goes. So I'm going to really stir this. And you can see it's starting to get a little thick, like oatmeal, very stringy. And I'll just add the whole wheat flour a little bit at a time. Stirred in, trying to catch, catch the dough and the batter that's up against the sides. That's doing good. All right. I'm adding about a quarter cup of whole wheat flour at a time now. Looking for just the right consistency, it's starting to pull away from the sides. There's really no substitute when you're making any kind of bread of getting in there with your hands and seeing how the dough feels. Actually, two cups was just about right on. Now, it's a little bit sticky. There's a little bit of flour still in the bottom of the bowl. But even with picking up that flour, it's still a little bit sticky. So I'm going to add a little bit more flour. It doesn't matter if it's white flour or whole wheat flour. Turn in the bowl to pick up all that flour that's in the bottom of the bowl. And if you can see the motion of my hand, I'm pulling up with my fingers and pushing down with the palm of my hand. And the palm of my hand, I can feel whether the dough is wet or not. Not bad, not bad. Still a little bit wet. The dough's got a nice springiness to it. All right. I think we have a nice dough there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and I'm going to put it on my pastry cloth. Put a little flour on here to begin with. And I'm just going to let that dough sit. Just for about 15 minutes I'm going to let it rest. Okay, so let's see how our dough is doing. It's nice and soft. You can, at this point, take a knife and cut it into chunks, or you can just start to break off pieces. So I'm just gonna squeeze. I'm pushing up through the middle just to make a nice, a nice ball. So I'll get a couple of these broken off, and then we'll start rolling. Just before I did this, I turned my frying pan on. So my frying pan, pan on there on the stove. I want that pan to get good and hot. You can also use an electric griddle. A little bit of stick, it's a little sticky on that one, so I'm gonna put a little flour on it. 
something fancy about making these balls and they don't all have to be the same size. Matter of fact, mine never are the same size and when I roll them out, they don't tend to be round. They start out nice and round and they morph into amoebas. remember how many this recipe made because I just start with some water. I don't usually measure it out. I had to go back to the original recipe to get a starting quantity of water. Looks like we're going to get about nine. All right, so we've got nine little balls here. My griddle is dry, my frying pan is dry, it does not have any oil in it. And what I want it to be is good and hot by the time I get done rolling this first, first burrito shell. Okay, so I'm using a cloth, you can use a board, you can just roll right out on your countertop. I'm going to put some flour on both sides. I like to use a cover on my rolling pin, but again, you don't have to. And if you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a towel or glass or anything that works. Just going to keep turning this and rolling it until it's pretty thin. Can feel the heat coming off of my frying pan. So let's get over to where you can see the frying pan and I'll show you how these get cooked. All right, so we're gonna just pop that right in there. Doesn't matter that there's a little bit of extra flour. I'm gonna give it a minute to start cooking and then I'm gonna just start pressing a little bit so I'm pressing the dough down onto the hot surface of the frying pan. Sometimes it takes the first one a little time to cook. And by the time you get the first one cooked, the frying pan is usually in pretty good shape for the second one. So if you, I don't know if you can see, we're starting to get some bubbles coming up in the, the dough. The flour that's in the frying pan is starting to brown up. That's okay. If it starts to burn, you can always take a paper towel and wipe out the frying pan between burrito shells. This one's starting to bubble up on this side now. It's hard to see. So between 30 seconds and a minute on each side, depending on how hot the frying pan is. If you feel like the one side isn't cooked enough, you can flip it over and do a little bit more. You can see it's starting to get a little brown right here and here. It smells wonderful. So while I was waiting for the dough to rest, we got our fillings ready, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. All right, so that one's done. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this in a dish towel and cover it up. And we'll roll, roll out the next one. So I'm gonna leave that frying pan up pretty high. I want the surface of it to be really hot when I put these in. We'll do one more. I 
made these with all whole wheat flour. They were a little harder to roll out. By adding a little bit of white flour to them, it makes them a little bit easier. All right, we're ready. Into the frying pan. So we're gonna fill these with refried beans. We're actually using black soybeans for our refried beans today. We're gonna to add a little bit of salsa and cheese. If we had fresh tomatoes, we'd use fresh tomatoes, maybe some chopped up fresh onions, um, some brewer's yeast, some nutritional yeast. You can fill them with whatever you want. This one's starting to bubble up nicely. You can see the bubble right there. That tells me that it's cooking in the middle and that bottom heat from the frying pan is what's making that bubble up. We've got a bubble there and a bubble there and a bubble there. It's the same kind of action that makes pita puff in the middle, that bottom heat. And by the time you get to the very last burrito shell, your frying pan is perfect. Just like pancakes. Nice and puffy and beautiful. We'll add that to its friend. And we're ready to cook the rest. Okay, so here we've got one of our burrito shells, nice and soft. It's got um, refried beans, some salsa, some guacamole, cheese, and sour cream on it. Here's our other eight taco shells, all nice and warm and soft, ready to go. If they get cool, you can always pop the whole thing right in the microwave for about a minute, and that will soften them up and warm them up again. And this is how we're gonna roll this up. So we're gonna fold the bottom under, fold one side over, and just roll it. And there you go.